Pascure is the newest and currently only game released by the independent studio Phantom 8. As a new game developer, it's obvious that their first game will not be their magnum opus, but that doesn't have to mean that it will be a bad game, so I was curious. The main thing to consider here is as an indie studio, their budget is going to be extremely tight and therefore the game will never be able to even come close to a AAA title. This is why I'm not being quite as strict with it as I would be with a AAA game, but I will still be strict enough. The game is very story driven, it features a lot of narration and cutscenes which is something that I always enjoy. However the first thing that struck me was the fact that all of the characters have a distinct German accent, although they're not really supposed to be Germans. I was unaware that the developer is based in Germany, but as I progressed through the game lots of things made it obvious, from posters with German writings to the elevators which call the floor on the ground, e.g. standing for Erdgeschoss, which is the German word for ground floor. The accents break the immersion somewhat, but unfortunately there were instant instances of broken English on several occasions. This is something you see often with super low budget productions where proofreading is not considered a high priority task, but I was really surprised that none of the developers had any friends who can speak English well enough to proofread this stuff. This is where I got curious and went to the developer's website. Even there you can find broken English. For example, in the phrase, he also ensures that the 8 in the studio does not to be reduced to 7. I'm not even sure what that's supposed to mean, but in any case it's pretty bad. The thing that baffles me is that if you scroll a bit higher, you can see that one of the core members is actually from England. They have a native speaker on their team and he could not be bothered to read all the lines in the game or simply play through the game. And you have to consider that this is a very short game, it took me about 3.5 hours to complete it. This is just sloppy and as much as I want to cut them some slack, under these circumstances I just can't do it. They should have paid more attention to it and especially because they had someone in the team who could take care of it. And the accents, while obvious, are absolutely acceptable. That is something I'm willing to forgive, but let me show you what I'm talking about with these short clips here. I'm going to take them down, Ian. With or without you. It's your decision. Any ideas on where I can access a security system? Probably you have to find the manager's office. Understood. It would also appear that the game is designed primarily with consoles in mind and the PC version is just a sloppy port. Even as you start the menu navigation does not even include a mouse cursor, not to mention that you confirm a selection with space instead of enter and you go back with E instead of the escape button. If you would like to check your button assignments or even change any, tough luck, no such option either. The gameplay is also unpolished in many ways. You play in the third person and combine stealth with action. The thing is that there is no cover system in place, so if you are essentially moving behind cover, you are not really covering yourself properly, you are just trying to navigate the character somehow, or you have the option of tanking the enemies. I also found it strange that there is no way to change the angle of your vision. Usually games in the third person perspective will allow you to shift the camera between left and right shoulder so that you can use this to peek around corners easier. Here it's not possible, you have one fixed shoulder and that makes it a lot harder to peek around the other corner. I've also noticed that the weapons are often inaccurate. Even if you place your reticle exactly on someone's head, oftentimes the shot will just miss. This would be acceptable if I'm playing some average person but our protagonist is a seasoned veteran, he's trained and above all an actual super soldier. His reflexes are enhanced giving him the ability to move so fast that time appears to slow down. Besides his bullet time he can also leave his body and use telekinesis. While these abilities sound cool, they come with a restriction which is demonstrated early on in the game. As the protagonist uses them, his sanity lowers. His vision becomes distorted and he starts to see things that are not really there. In order to counter this effect, he needs to take blue pills which reveal his sanity. This sounds like a very cool concept, but guess what? After this one time at the start of the game, none of this is ever an issue again. Your sanity is essentially just mana for your spells which will generate, I mean regenerate to up to 30% on its own. The blue pills can refill it to 100%, but that's it. If you don't have any pills, it will just go up to 30% and stay there. Even when out of sanity, and I mean completely out of sanity, your character will never hallucinate like that time at the beginning where you saw it. It's just a missed opportunity and I'm very disappointed because it seems like something that's very cool and interesting. When it comes to stealth, it's simply an impractical solution most of the time. First of all, our protagonist has three distinct takedown animations while in stealth. They seem to go 
go one after another and each is slower than the previous. The weird thing is that the first one is fastest, he uses his knife and just stabs the opponent. The third one on the other end is the slowest one and he will just go through them. This is strange, why not use the knife every time? He actually chokes the last person instead of stabbing him. If you don't actually pay attention you might take down one enemy quickly and then be seen during the super long second takedown and be forced to fight so because you're seen you're no longer in stealth. Even if you wanted to go with stealth. The gunplay is unsatisfying as well. As I have mentioned the weapons are inaccurate, another problem is that there are so few of them and they mostly feel the same. You have a handgun, a heavy handgun with a laser sight which only is turns on while the enemy is using it, I could not figure out how to turn on the laser sight while I had it, a submachine gun and a short shotgun. And the weapons sound really bad, they sound like, like toys would sound. It, absolutely fake and inappropriate. The graphics are okay, character models are passable for something made by an indie studio so I won't be too harsh there. The levels are all small and very restricted but that doesn't have to be a bad thing when done well. Here it does the job but I would not go as far as calling it well done. You have two distinct types of levels here, the ones that are supposed to be in the real world and the ones that are in the nightmare levels. Our protagonist has nightmares and you get to play them. I found those levels much more interesting because they appear to be more creative and supplement the story very well. Those were also the levels where your superpowers were used the most so that's pretty cool. Unfortunately those superpowers tend to also take out any challenge from most situations. Your enemies during the nightmares are faceless mannequins who chase you. You're supposed to sneak by them and not be noticed because they are very fast and they will be able to catch to you normally, to catch up to you normally. But if you use your bullet time, sneaking is no longer necessary because you are much faster than them. And since there are many safe zones where the mannequins cannot follow you, you have enough sanity to use your bullet time and sprint past them without having to worry that they will ever have the chance to catch you. The game story is one of the few things about it that I actually enjoy. Your name is Ian and you're a super soldier. It's unclear how you came to those powers because three years of your memory have been wiped clean. Your motivation is to find out what happened to you. I could tell you more but the story is the game's only redeeming quality and it does feature a few twists which you will see coming from afar but still manage to entertain you anyway. The game was called Inception like by the developers but I was reminded of the Matrix even more. I mean you have blue pills, superpowers, a protagonist who is the one etc. Luckily I did love the Matrix so this story really appealed to me. The problem is that for the story to progress your character actually invades the minds of two other people on separate occasions. On one of which you take control of the person and even kill him through your thoughts afterwards. Sadly all of this happens in a cutscene and you can't actually do any of it during the actual gameplay which is in my opinion wasted potential yet again. The game seems to try to be scary at one part and while there is no chance of it ever inducing fear in anyone, I find the change of scenery quite pleasant and interesting. It even features a few puzzles. Those were the best levels of the game because they did not involve any of its flawed combat. But speaking of combat, the game features two boss fights, although one of them just consists of you chasing after some guy and killing guards along the way. There's really no need for that particular enemy to have lots of health and be bu a bullet sponge because until you really reach him you have to kill a bunch of guys and then once you reach him you're just shooting at him like crazy and he dies but he takes a lot of bullets and that's absolutely unnecessary. As for the second boss fight that one's more creative and entertaining. The thing is it's also the last fight of the game. Something that seems strange you see the game ends with a cliffhanger. That was simply a terrible choice because I have no idea if the developer will ever make a second part of this game. It seems to me like Phantom 8 have gravely overestimated the game, their game's commercial success. And the problem here is that the game is also extremely short. When it ended I was actually wondering if this is really the end or if it's some kind of a joke and after the credits the game will continue. It seemed out of place and way too sudden. Perhaps they ran out of money and decided to simply stop there, no idea. But this ending is terribly unsatisfying and will definitely anger a lot of people. And I mean you have to consider that this game costs 30 euro on Steam at the moment. This game costs as much as Dishonored Death of the Outsider. And while I did not enjoy the latter much, there is no comparison between the two games. Dishonored is light years away from this game in every aspect. It's just a much much better game and still costs the same. There's no denying it. Past Cure is heavily overpriced. Honestly 15 euro would have been a fair price considering everything else. So as you can see this game does not really manage to deliver and has the clear distinct problems of most
most indie games. Lack of polish, lack of content and above all a very unreasonable price. Perhaps if they release a second one and lower the price of this one I would recommend it because the story is not half bad and you can kill three and a half hours with the game. The important thing is that you actually get to see what happens through the story and not just play this game and be like where's the rest of it? As things are at the moment the price and the fact that the game simply stops in the middle make it a bad deal any way you look at it. I'm all about supporting new developers. This I have to also be honest the game is not worth your money at the moment. If at least the story was complete but that's not the case and I would worry that it might never be because we don't know if this game will sell enough for the developer to decide to make a sequel. So my advice currently don't waste your money on this game. Thank you for watching my review I hope it was informative and entertaining and I hope to see you on the next one. Have a great day.